Hello and welcome to Beer Tier, a German engineer. Explained, oxygen not included. Today we are back with version 2.0 of our Metal Volcano Tamer and it is not just a Metal Volcano Tamer but a every Metal Volcano Tamer with the exception of Niobium. This time around we are much more efficient than last time around and at the end of the video I may show off how we can cool every single volcano at once with one singular aqua tuner. So let's stay tuned for that and then just jump right into it and see how that works out for us. And here we are. So let's just take any of them that's currently running, which is only one and it's down here on the bottom left. So let's turn our overlay back on and let's take a closer look at our aluminum volcano. And here we have it. This here is our aluminum volcano tamer. All of our tamers are built the exact same way. The only difference is the size of our metal tiles down here on the bottom. Why that is, I will show you in a couple minutes. But first of all, let's just go over it real quick and see what we've got here. So first of all, let's take a look at our power. Here on the left, we have our power input of some sort, which is probably your power grid. We hook it up to our thermo aqua tuner, to our auto sweeper, to our conveyor loader, and two of our conveyor shutoffs, one on the top and one on the bottom. That is pretty important that all of this stuff here is powered and that is that here on the top our steam turbines are just coming out to the right with my standard build i always build it like that is it really necessary probably not but that is up to you then next on our list is our overview for our cooling loop so let's take a look at it first of all we have our thermo aqua tuner we are coming out to the left this is not necessary absolutely you can also come out to the right however you want to it's really up to you then we're going to come first of all before we do anything else into our cool box and that's very important we always want to get into the cool box first so the coldest water or in this case polluted water can reach our cool box at the beginning and put most of its cold power into here then we go back up cool down our steam turbines are just have a line of a radiant liquid pipes made out of aluminum straight through here you have a liquid reservoir just to make sure that everything is nice and stable and if we fill this thing up a little bit further so we can always expand it in the future because we certainly have much more cooling power than just for this here and then we can come back into our aqua sooner through our temperature sensor that is on our pipe right here what that is set to we will see in a second but first of all, our steam turbines, we are just coming into a bridge and then come back into our steam room right beside our aqua tuner so we can use it most efficiently. That is pretty straightforward. As usual, a standard cooling loop. You have seen it by now a thousand times. In our conveyor overlay, we can see our conveyor loader here on the very right. We are just coming up with it and to the left, we are going all the way around, looping it through here as much as we can, snaking along right here until we hit our conveyor rail thermos sensor, which then decides with the help of our conveyor shutoff if we're going to give it another round in our steam room or if we send it down towards the bottom. And the bottom is our cool box. And here we have the exact same setup, just in this particular case, at least a little bit shorter. But the principle is the exact same. We have another conveyor rail thermos sensor right here here and another conveyor shutoff which then decides are we going to send it out away from our cooling loop which means it's cold enough and if not we're going to give it another round it's literally that simple the only important thing here to note is this conveyor bridge if you don't put this here in every once in a while the materials do get confused and kind of loop back and forth see so either up and down or left and right i have seen both to prevent that from happening a conveyor bridge and you will never have problems it's literally that simple and then last but not least, our automation overlay. And here we can take a closer look. Here we have our liquid pipe thermal sensor, which is hooked up to our thermal aqua tuner. And I have it set to above negative five degrees. So if we are warmer than negative five degrees, we are sending a green signal and therefore turning on our thermal aqua tuner and cooling down our polluted water. Polluted water is fine up until negative 20 degrees. Negative five minus negative 14 makes negative 19. So you're safe and our water will never freeze, but it will also get as cold as we can. Then on the right, our conveyor rail thermal sensor right here, I've set it to above 200 degrees. So if it is above 200 degrees, we go green, which means we're going to send it around again. Green means go another round where you are. If you send a red signal, which would mean obviously it should be below 200 degrees Celsius, we're going to send it down. And when we send it down, we are going into our cooling loop. And in our cooling loop, we have the exact same setup as I said earlier, with the difference that here I've set it to above 30 degrees. If our material is higher than 30 degrees, we're going to send it through the cooling loop again. If it is below 30 degrees, we're going to plop it out right here on the right. And that is literally how the entire system works. The only other notable thing that I have here is here in the back. I have hidden the temp shift plate, which is made out of diamond or better to say five of them. One right here, 
one right there, one right here, another one here, and the last one all the way over there. And this is just to help us out a little bit to keep the temperature consistent within our steam room. Notably, the temp shift plates, I never build them very close to the edge because I do not want to transfer all the heat into our insulated towels. That is uh, counterproductive to say the least and completely pointless, so I'd rather not. And that's why I only build them here in the middle and I, for example, don't have one right here, even there. And we take a look, if I grab the temp shift plate and I copy it, there would be another space right here, just two away, but that is not what I want to do. So let's go back into our conveyor overview and let's take a look what this actually looks like. We can see that our thermal sensor here is green and as long as it is green, it will send it around and around. Let's speed it up just a little bit and see if we can find some red signaling here. Should be there anytime now. And here we have our first piece that is coming down and we can see it cools down drastically. The heat transfer of our aluminum metal tiles is insane. We're cooling this piece here immediately down to negative 15 degrees. Let's watch it real quick here. So on the first tile, we are 23.6 degrees. So we have only one tile behind us. We are just below 200 degrees and we are already down to 23.6 degrees. On the second one, we are down to 0.6 degrees. On the third one, negative 6.8. And then on the next one, negative 10.2, 11.9, 12.9. And that is how that goes. It is crazy how much cooling power we have. And when we take a look at our water, we are barely making a dent into it. We are at negative 5.9 degrees coming in, 5.8 degrees. And over here, we are coming out at one degree. So even at one degree, as if we cool it down, we are back down at negative 13 the moment it reaches this temperature sensor right here. And this is not all. Let's take a look. When is this tungsten volcano here gonna erupt? In 0.2 cycles. It is clearly the shortest one. Let's take a look at the longest one that I have built over here is 12 tiles long and the shortest one is only four tiles long so literally one third or 33 percent of the longest one we have and we will see what that here looks like as soon as this one erupts. And here we are erupting right now. Metal is coming out. We are plopping it into our conveyor loader and we're going to start sending it around as we speak. So let's zoom in and let's take a look. What is the actual temperature of our tungsten when it comes out here? About 208 degrees. So this here is pretty simple and straightforward. 300 degrees, 200 degrees. So we should maybe need one or two rounds to get it down to temperature. So let's speed it up just a bit and let's watch it. Let me turn the conveyor rail overlay on and let's see what happens. And now we already have the first pieces in here. Tungsten holds a hell of a lot less energy than aluminum does, but at the same time, this here will still work for aluminum. It's no problem at all. But let's see what happens. We are coming in at 158.1 degrees. Let's go to tile number one. We are already at 4.6. So on the first tile, it would already be enough to spit it back out. This is ridiculous. These aluminum tiles here have so much cooling power. It is ridiculous. Down here, negative four degrees. It is not quite as cold because the way is not quite as long. So that is quite obvious, but it is still more than sufficient for any normal person's use, in my opinion. It is a hell of a lot faster to build, a hell of a lot easier to build, and it also saves you a bunch of resources. So this will definitely do. And even if you have to loop it, it's no problem at all. You will never need more than one loop, even with aluminum. These are the six versions that I have built. Once again, the first one is 12 long. The second one is eight, then seven, then six, then five and then four. It's that simple. You can always build it a little bit bigger and it is very easy to access because you can just dig up these three tiles here. If you think you need more cooling power, plop on another row and close it back up. Nothing will ever happen. You can easily do that while this thing here is between erupts. It's really not that big a deal. It only takes seconds because all you have to do is put in one more row of metal tiles, one more row of liquid pipes, one more row of conveyor rails, and then close it back up with insulated tiles. It is literally that simple and straightforward. And I would just start with this here. And if you think it is not enough for you, just add another one. And if you think that is not enough for you, add another one. That is what I would do. That is my recommendation for you as well. So let's see if we can cool all of them with one single thermo aqua tuner. And here it is. Yes, in case you were wondering, I have a tiny little spoiler for you. It does actually work without a problem. Here we have one singular thermo aqua tuner all the way in the right. And that is the only one that we have for this entire system. So let's take a look at what is actually happening. And let's start here on the right. Let me pause it for a minute because all the overlays are the exact same thing power overlay there's nothing different plumbing overlay 
nothing different. Automation overlay, same thing as before. And conveyor overlay is also here on the top, the exact same thing. The only difference is that our cool box is not down here on the bottom, but actually just a conveyor rail leads away from it. But we get to that in a second. First of all, let's take a look at the water. We are coming through here. We're coming through the top. We're coming around. We're coming all the way up to this thermal sensor right here, back into our thermal aqua tuna, into our liquid reservoir, and then we are coming out. And this here actually follows our conveyor rail. So let's follow them along and then we end up over here. So let's take a look at our water first. With our water, we are just coming in here. That is the first thing that we are going to hit out of the Surma Aqua Tuner. And as usual, that is very important. So we can actually transfer all the heat from those metal tiles into our polluted water. And then we keep on going. But what is going on over here with our conveyor overlay? Yes, we are coming over here. We have conveyor bridge here, here and there. And that is just to make sure that our materials actually know where they have to go. As soon as they enter this area, we are coming down all the way. And then we are snaking through all those metal tiles up and up all the way back to this conveyor rail thermal sensor and this one here is actually set up the other way around it is set up to below 30 degrees and the only reason for that is that the orientation of our conveyor shutoff is different it makes no difference whatsoever however you want to do it so you turn this here green and it will go on and it will actually spit it out if it goes red then we send it around again so it's the very opposite of what we are doing up here here we are above and here we are below that is the same thing just in reverse no problem at all then when we follow our water along all we're doing we're coming all the way to the left and then we're going to cool down all of our steam turbines all six of them until our loop is completed and we're going to go around again so let's take a look we are coming in currently at 5.6 degrees celsius and we are going out at negative eight it's literally that simple and we have the enough cooling power for all of those not all of those are active as a matter of fact uh, this one here is active only the cobalt volcano is dormant also the tungsten volcano it must have just gone dormant because it was just active but everything else is properly working and this system here just works there is no problem with it whatsoever let's up the speed a little bit and we should see over here the aluminum come out very soon and we can actually follow it along this rail here really quick so we can see what it looks like and here we have the first pieces they're coming out and along pretty straightforward through this conveyor bridge through this conveyor bridge coming through the wall and then into here and we are already immediately losing a bunch of heat and as soon as we reach the very top right here right around now there it is we are just sending it either through or back around but back around is not going to happen with this size here at least not anytime soon you would have to have a perfect storm of most of them erupting at the same time that that would ever happen this is just a safety mechanism to be very realistic but yes, this is how the system here works. Once again, it is pretty easy and straightforward, but there's one more thing that I want to show you. So let's do that real quick. Right here, we have a gold volcano and we can see that we have a piece on our conveyor rail right here consistent of 953 micrograms of gold at 648.8 degrees Celsius. And there is no heat exchange happening at all. So what can we do about it and why is it happening? Well, the reason is that Cly, the developer of the game Oxygen Not Included, has this here actually turned off. There is a snippet from the forum on your screen right now that explains why. So pause the video if you actually want to read it. They have massive problems when this here occurs if they have heat exchange all the way down to crashing the game. So what can we do and what is the problem about it? Well, the problem is that this here will just loop forever. It will never, ever leave here. And if you let it run long enough, you will get several or even many of those packets right here. And eventually it can potentially clog up your system. So what can we do about it? Well, there is not really a solution as far as I'm aware. The only thing you can do, let me pause it, is this here. Every once in a while, when you happen to see this here happening, just take your conveyor rail thermal sensor and set it to the opposite of what it is supposed to be. So it should be above 200 degrees. Let's set it to below. Let's see what happens and it's coming out so we can set it back to where it came from right now and now we have the exact same problem down here because here it also says above 30 degrees it will send a green signal and send it through problem is it is way above 30 degrees it will actually measure the temperature at 600 and something degrees so we gotta set it to below and when we set it to below we can make it exit yes it is a little bit tedious but i do not have a better solution right now if you know of a better solution please let me know i want to know i have not found one i cannot come up with one and i also have not really found a viable solution that doesn't involve a hell of a lot of automation that is just not worth it in my opinion so this here is my solution it's quick it's easy and if you do it once every, what, 20 cycles or so, it's perfectly fine.
But that is all I have for you today. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video and comment down below. Please let me know, especially if you have a viable solution for this bug. But with that, I say thank you and peace.